free Golden Eagles for War Thunder, download now in the description below. Hey, that's me saying it live for once. Normally it's just a recording or played over and over and over again. Anyway, my name's Aaron Armenian, not that anybody really needs to know. It has nothing to do with what I'm about to say, but anyway, what I want to discuss today is a few things that I think we should probably as a community consider for War Thunder. Now, I'm a YouTuber, but that gives me zero entitlement to actually suggest things because A, I have zero knowledge of actually designing a game, and B, I probably haven't read the forums closely enough, so some of these mechanics that I may mention may have already been talked about before in depth throughout the community. But I'm just going to merely suggest some things that I've been thinking about, and in the comments below I want to read your feedback, see your thoughts and opinions, if they might be viable for War Thunder, I do not know. Now my idea is to add some fun stuff to War Thunder that will make the game funner in some way, also maybe allowing Gaijin to make it a little bit on the side for themselves, but we'll get to those details later. Now the first thing I'll talk about is a new mechanic that I've been considering, which is actually giving a purpose to optics in the game. At the current moment, optics for the gun sight in War Thunder are modelled in. Not for every tank, but most tanks that are modelled in. If you look in the x-ray vision of a tank, you will see maybe to the left or to the right of the gun, there will be a gun sight, just a little kind of rectangle block. And that block can actually be hit by shells and can be damaged. But when the optics are damaged, it serves no purpose. My idea is, is that when the optics are damaged, when you enter your gun sight mode to actually look down the sight, it should just be cracked. And there should be no magnification vision given. Because when you look down the sight, you, you are getting seeing something magnified, you're getting a close up view. Maybe when the gun sight is damaged, or the more damaged, generally it just tends to be broken. It tends to either be A OK or broken, but depending on the level of damage, if it is possible for it to take minor amounts of damage, it could just be a little bit cracked. But when it's fully broken, when the unit's gone completely black, it just can just show the gun sight with no vision at all, but completely cracked. You know, like effect around the zoomed in screen. And I think that might be quite interesting. It adds another layer of immersion, another mechanic you have to consider about. And of course you can also repair the, I don't know how, for some, I don't think tankers exactly carried spare parts of them to fix their fucking lenses, but we can fix anything in the game at the moment, so we can also put down the list of things that can be repaired by your tank crew. Now, I think this mechanic would actually add another layer of depth for the game, but at the same time it wouldn't be a complicating feature, it wouldn't be daunting for new players. It would just be a minor annoyance that is like, oh bugger, I've now lost my gun sights. Now the reason I was thinking of actually making gun sights worse is to encourage players to use the binoculars. Because at the moment I don't think many players are even aware that they're in the game. Now talking about the optics getting damaged brings me in for a good segue to talk about the second thing I wanted to talk about which is making binoculars a bigger aspect of the game. By making it possible for the gun sights to be damaged, you know it removes your ability to actually look at where the enemy are because some people just aim down the gun all the time to see where the enemy is. This encourages play players to use their binoculars. But at the same time I also want to nerf binoculars. Now my suggested nerf for the binoculars could be when a commander wants to use binoculars you actually have to toggle a key for commanders inside the tank or commanders outside the tank. Now this is where I'm getting a bit worried. I'm worried that I'm over complicating the game because I know a 12 year old that plays War Thunder. He plays a lot of arcade tanks and a lot of arcade planes and I want him to continue having fun without being bogged down in more and more mechanics, unnecessary mechanics that could be avoided. Because what I like about War Thunder is that it's a nice bridge between World of Tanks and something like IL-2, which is much more simulator oriented or uh, DCS Combat Sim? I, can't, I hope I said that correctly, otherwise this will be embarrassing. But the idea is for a fun game which is accessible but does have sim mechanics such as, you know, modular damage instead of having health bars. Anyway, my idea for the binoculars is there's a key that you can toggle. That key will determine whether your commander stays inside the tank or outside the tank. When your commander is outside the tank, you can then switch to binocular view. When your commander is outside the tank, it's you are sacrificing his protection for, to gain that vision, which makes you much more vulnerable. You don't want to lose an unnecessary crew member, as well as the commander is quite an important member of crew. He's slightly more important than the radio gunner, slightly less important to the loader, but he's still important because he can buff every other member of your crew by a small percentage. When the commander is outside the tank, when he pulls out the binocular view, there can be a little animation of just pulling binoculars out of his ass. Not literally, but just, you know, pulling binoculars out from his midsection. So pulling them up to his head, and whenever he looks through his binoculars, he's swiveling around. The problem that I thought about with this mechanic, about talking about how the... The problem with this mechanic of being able to 
tell your commander to be inside the tank or outside the tank is that many of the American tanks, the sh you know, especially from the Sherman M4s, they have machine guns, 50 cows on top of their tanks. This applies to the Russians too, but we'll talk about the Americans. They have 50 cows on top of their tanks. And you can fire those even with no commander present. The commander's inside the tank, safely protected. Whereas in real life, the commander would have to be sticking half his waist out of the top of the tank to be able to fire that 50 cal. So by introducing this new mechanic of saying the commander could be inside the tank, outside the tank, and having to be outside to use binoculars, am I nerfing the Americans? Because it would be pretty illogical to be able to use the 50 cal on top of the tank if the commander's nice and snug inside the tank. That might be a problem with this new mechanic I'm suggesting. But by introducing this new mechanic, I'm also increasing the level of skill of the game. It's just something you always have to think about. It's it's going to increase fun for some people in the way that they're always thinking of trade-offs. You're always thinking to yourself, do I need that binocular view? Or in essence, is this going to be quite a powerful nerf to the binoculars? People will just say, screw it, I'm not using binoculars ever from now on. But that's why I talked about the optics earlier, because by making optics possible be destroyed, you might want to switch to binoculars in a time when you're desperate to get that pesky tank that's really far away to try and snipe him. I hope I kind of explained my thoughts and opinions on the matter in a good way. I'm not really good at articulating my thoughts, am I? I should probably have scripted this. That's what a lot of people would do, but nope. I'm just rambling along here. I'm surprised if anyone's listening at this point. They're probably half confused to death. But no matter, I've still got many things to talk about. Now, these are the paid things I'm going to talk about, which some people may not be too happy about. But I think it's stuff that we can pay for because Gaijin can actually put time into developing something fun that isn't necessary for the core gameplay, but is fun for the players. Now, remember I was talking about how the commander can now come out of the tank to say hello to you by using his binoculars. Remember I mentioned you can toggle him in or out, and then you have to actually switch to binoculars. Well, you can purchase taunts for your commander, and these taunts can be anything from cheering, jeering, making fun of the enemy, fun voice lines, not exactly voice lines, but when he's standing outside the tank, you know, waving his arms around practically, I don't think we're going to get a Nazi salute in the game. I, I don't think that's just right. I mean, personally, I would like to, but I noticed they removed any swastikas stickers in the game. I understand the reasoning behind that. This is technically a free plus game. But we can have, you know, stuff, you know, and we can get some new voice recordings for the game, for, you know, the tanks that are currently in it, for the commanders to have charismatic lines, insults, disses, angry arm shaking for the British, passionate uh, stuff about the motherland for Russia, the corresponding, you know, like body gestures. They're getting really enthusiastic about it. And I'm hoping by adding these paid custom taunts, well, not exactly custom. I mean, I can imagine they'll be under the section. When you click customize your tank, somewhere in that menu where you can choose how many bushes you want to stick on your tank, how many, you know, big American flags you want to stick on, there'll be a section where you can be like, what taunts do you want to have for your tank? But when you buy a taunt, it will be unlocked for all taunts for that country. But I think the taunt should be exclusive to that country because it should be personalized. It shouldn't be a generic taunt. The American taunts should be, you know, done with an American voice actor, with an American gestures, stuff that they kind of act and how they say. And you can have multiple commanders if you want. You can decorate their uniforms, for example. Not exactly custom, but you can buy different outfits for them if you want. Different coats, different hats, different medals. And it would be a way for players to show off their individuality. Oh, fuck, I can't say that word. Individuality? Oh, fuck, I can't say it. But a way for players to customize their character for the commander, which is almost their personality they want to project within the game, to distinguish themselves from everyone else. So they'll be like, ha ha, look at my commander. I was wearing a cool hat, which is expensive. Not expensive, but the idea would be there's a variance of hats. There wouldn't be the golden fucking glowing hat in TF2. It wouldn't be the golden frying pan. For anyone that plays TF2 they or Counter-Strike, they know about expensive items. No, this wouldn't be unboxing. This would be straight up, you want to buy this thing or that thing or that thing and equip it. I do not know the prices of these, but they should be probably in Golden Eagles. They could sell these things in bundles. And the reason I'm talking about selling these things, I guess they could have a couple of free ones for people to earn to get them incentivized into the system or messing around with their commander. What I'm worried about though is that this is a lot of faffing around for the general straight up the game where you just want to point your tank bow in the direction of the enemy and kill them. Is this just all a big waste of time? Is this drawing development time away from other things that could be happening? Possibly yes. Would it cost a lot of money to animate these uh, commanders? 
Probably yes as well. I was hoping that maybe the generic hatch opening animation could be recycled within the country. But I definitely know for example the T-34 the hatches tend to open forwards. Whereas the German commander hatches tend to open sideways. So that will involve a different animation for opening. Which could cost a bit of dosh. But then that's why I'm saying they could also sell these things. Another question could be about a uh, con of this. Well, I'm thinking pros and cons, not an actual con con. I'm thinking, would many players be aware of these current things in the game? Will they be willing to purchase it, or will they think it's just too much of a gimmick? I mean, me personally, I mean, me being known absolutely no game experience, I can imagine it being quite fun to have my British commander yelling out for queen and country and stuff and shaking his fist angrily, wearing a silly hat. Not a silly hat, but something that'll fit with the in-game World War II theme. Something that fits in it, but it's no, my commander, my personality, my actions I'm telling him to do. They can bind these actions fairly easily, I think, into the current in-game chat commands that are based... You know if you press T in-game, it brings up a menu, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, I think it goes up to 5, maybe? I don't know the exact specifics, but if you press T, it brings up an option saying, like, you know, attack, defend, do this, do that, do this, leading in for landing. They can put it into that menu there, under a toggleable, so it could be, like, T, and then number 6, for example, could be taunts. You press 6, and then guess what, you've got 6 taunts lined up, which one do you want to use? I want your feedback though on this idea, I mean, it might be too much of a ambitious project for War Thunder, because if you have noticed in War Thunder, there is no actual model moving characters that move between different places. There's idle animations, there is also people's arms that have been like, you know, strapped to control surfaces, you know, you've got a guy holding a stick, if you look in the cockpit, your guy's moving the stick around, but I think that's just because they attached their arm to a stick, they haven't actually animated the character. There is no animation stuff and if I'm talking about commanders and tanks being able to open and close the hatches or people say for planes they want them to open and close the canopies because at the moment the canopy opening and closing is modeled but there currently is no arm to actually in first person view show that. My excuse though for not doing it for planes is that each plane needs to almost have a custom animation compared to a generic hatch opening. A lot of planes open a lot of different ways. I know there's a lot of series of planes that are fairly similar like the JU-87s, there's the Fucker Wolf 109s, the IL-2s they're all practically the same, but actually no, those planes, I don't think those planes even actually have a canopies that open. I know the Spitfires, the late ones do. The 22, the 23 and the 24? Was it just the 23 and the 24? Is there even a 24 Spitfire in the game? I don't know. I should probably stop naming exact facts and figures because then these figures can be thrown back into my face. But point being is that planes will take a lot more animation time because they're all individual, as well as less people use the first person animation in War Thunder, whereas if you're playing arcade or real tanks, everyone's gonna see your commander wearing his pretty sick uniform and shaking his fist angry at you after you kill him. And that was a long time talking about that one mechanic. That's, well not really a mechanic, it's more of a kind of new thing that Gaijin can sell, and it's something that I might actually willingly buy. All right, summary of commanders with taunts and, you know, hats and stuff. It may just be too much of a gimmick that will waste development time that could be focused in other areas. But I would rather pay 2,000 eagles for my commander to say something cool and shake his hand around than actually paying to stick a bush on my tank. But then again, if Gaijin can sell bushes for 2,000 eagles on a tank, then why would they bother animating a commander? Let's move on to the very last thing. Custom hangers. When I say custom, I just mean the ability to customise them. Now this could be something very simple as in just buying a new location for your hangar, something that looks different from the default hangar, or this could be buying decorations for your hangars using either in-game currency or eagles. It might give something people to spend money on if they want to do it. But then again it's a bit less, it's not going to be that useful because yes you can see your own hangar, but no one else gets to see your own hangar. Whereas when I was talking about the commanders, people are going to see your commander in-game. Would people be willing to spend money to get a new hangar in a new location? I mean, would you find it pretty cool if you found your plane parked on the edge of an aircraft carrier instead of being in generic hangar that it's currently in? Would you like to see your plane currently on the front line somewhere, you know, uh, an airfield near Stalingrad, for example, where you've got JU-87s flying overhead and you've got air raid sirens going off, you've got those flashing strobe lights in the background, strafing the sky, you see AAA fire firing to the sky. Would people want to pay to get backgrounds like that for their hangers? Maybe all I've talked about is a bunch of tosh. But at the end of it, I'll come down to one thing. I reckon that gun optic sites 
are the simplest thing that I'm talking about to implement here, and I think they'll introduce a new layer of depth which wouldn't be too complicating for new players, and it'll be fairly fun, because I've pretty much been rambling on now for 20 minutes and I don't really know why, this is really unstructured, I should probably try and structure, the structure these next time, I'm even stuttering now. I don't even have a stutter, I'm just talked for so long that I... I'm stuttering for some reason, and now I'm rambling. So yeah, if you like this video, like, comment and subscribe when I break your fucking legs. But please, please, please actually do leave a comment below on what your opinions are about what I talked about. Because I'm interested to know, and if you got your own ideas and suggestions for War Thunder, let me know, because I want to talk about them too. I'll be rather interested to know what your thoughts are. Maybe you can think about ways to tweak my ideas, or you can just say flat out they're rubbish, and you can talk about your idea and why you think it's better. Maybe the game doesn't need any more ideas, maybe it just needs more tanks and planes and some boats. Maybe they should stop wasting their time with these ideas. But these ideas are kind of a way for Gaijin to generate revenue without spending too much time as well. Then again, voice acting talent is not cheap either. Animation might be slightly easier to attain because it can be done in-house, but voice acting they might have to do externally. It takes time to do voice acting, make people think it's very simple, but it takes a lot of time and effort. Not that I know anything about it. Wow, I did a conclusion after I already ended the video again. Yep, this is the real end, for real. Alright, see you guys in the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe, or I'll break your f***ing legs.